and action. All right, Bike Skills Project, Peter Glassford here. Uh, I just want to run through the flat change process for everyone again. Um, I really like to get my athletes uh, in the winter going through this, even inside and when they're on the trainer, just simulating this so that when we're on the road, we're really confident. Um, you know, and people will talk about not having to do it in races, the races are short, you know, whatever. Um, but we're all going to be out training. We all want to have a good fun and go on, have good fun and go out on adventures and stuff. And, and so it's a really important for our, our own self-confidence and our own training that we do know how to do this. So, um, tire is flat. Um, this one particularly, we've actually scrubbed the sidewall. Um, and I'll find that for you when we get going here. Here it is. And so there's actually a little nick in the sidewall. So we'll, today we have a bonus. We'll be able to see how we can boot that and get it so that the tube doesn't bulge out on us. But starting from the beginning, I've undone my quick release. Um, and then basically all I do is I grab the derailleur and just push the tire out. Um, and so that's sort of tricky at first for people to get. But it's basically just I've undone the quick release. I grab the derailleur and pull the spring out of the way and then the tire should just drop out of the way. That should work for road or mountain. And then another thing I like to do is I just lay the bike on its side. And if you're careful, there should be no contact points. It should be good. So now we have our wheel. And the thing, the ominous thing of getting that tire off there, everyone will carry their tire levers and stuff. But again, I like to see people get to the point that they rarely will need those. So the process for that is basically I'll go around, break all that bead just with my thumb, Go around, do the other side. So I'm just pushing that bead into the center of that U rim all the way around. And that should get me lots of slack. And then I sort of put it against my hip, use my thumbs, and just try and pull that bead. Sometimes it'll be tough, so I'll just go try and get that slack again, remembering that we have a U here. So if we push that in further, it pushes that tire out to the far side. And then now you can see tons of bead there. And now I can just work that off. Now we have our tire off. We can pull our tube out if we have it. If we had tubeless, process is the same. We just have a valve here to unscrew and pop that out. Okay, so then we have our tube out. Now if we're on the trail and we're not sure how we flatted, then we'd want to do a little search and see, oh, there's bar wrappers in here or a thorn or some glass, maybe watch your hands if you're going in. And so we always do a good search because we want that next tube. It's probably our only tube. So we really want it to go in there and hold air. Okay, so in this case, I mentioned earlier, we had a bit of a hole in the side of the bead just from, or in the side of the tire from rubbing on a rock. And so what we do is we make a boot and that's what we did to get home the other day and what these wrappers are from. So here when we find our spot, which is always the chest, you can see there's that little bit there. Okay, and that's pretty common. You see that on the road bike. And so what we do is with an energy bar wrapper or you know a dollar bill or something, we put that in there and then put the tube in and that keeps that tire or the tube from bulging out of the tire. So that's just a little bonus trick. So if we assume that this tube is now good, this is our fresh tube. The process for getting that in, we've got it nice and safe. We know there's no thorns, no glass in there. Most people will pump this up just a little with their mouth or with a tube, or sorry, with a pump. And that just gets it to take shape so that we can get it in there in one piece without pinching it. The next challenge is always to find the valve hole. And basically you'll start with the valve, put the valve into the hole, put the tire over it. Now we're going to put it all into the casing. And now if you remember that little trick with our thumbs, we know that we have to get it into that U, get the tire in there so that we have lots of slack at the bottom and we don't need those tire levers. So just going around, working my thumbs around, I'll put it against my chest to sort of hold it. And then it should be, and I'm like, oh no, it's getting tight. So all I'm gonna do is take a breath, start at this other side, work my hands again, try and get a little more slack, work those thumbs, and then it should be good. And then the extra check I always like to do is just bring that around to make sure there's no tube stuck between those valves, and that's your pinch flat you don't wanna get. And then from there, we're ready to inflate. So if we had CO2, we'd inflate it from there. If we have our tire pump, if we're at home like we are now, we can inflate it there. But we'll skip that process for the sake of video. And let's get this back in. So again, this is sort of a tricky situation for a lot of people. A lot of people like to put it in their hardest gear, the smallest cog. 
um, on the derailleur. So I just shift all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is again, if you remember that same process, I'm just going to pull that derailleur out of the way. I put it, it's always the chain. Get the chain in on about that. It doesn't even have to be perfect on that smallest cog. Pull it in around and you can be a little rough and then it just should snap in. And again, that's something just to play around with. You'll realize, you know, how rough you can be and what you can get away with. But that's essentially it. Make sure that quick release is done up tight. Make sure your valve is closed. And then that's your basic flat change.